So, um, just giving, give a little background, like what neighborhood you grew up with or what area resonates most with you when you think about growing up. I would say it's a couple, couple neighborhoods. Uh, I would say around West Side. Around West Side. This is called West Side? This is called West Side? When you say West Side, it's really like, because it's West Side Shopping Center right there. So it's like right down the street from Southwestern High School. I guess the area that resonated with me, it's just called West Side. And when you say West Side, it's really like, because it's West Side Shopping Center right there. Emerson Village. Emerson Village, like in well, really Emerson Village, Cooks Lane, the very edge of the city, if you will. Um, uh, I lived in Yale Heights, and well, yeah, I guess I grew up in Yale Heights too, but I, I don't really consider myself like growing up in those places. I definitely have far more memories of being, you know. A younger child around, like the village and around, uh, like just the Cook Lane neighborhood. What was your relationship with the neighborhood? Um, well, that that street in particular, we had a like my mom grew up on that street too, and it's a really small street. It's probably about twenty houses on the entire street. But my mom ain't had a car for a long time when I was growing up, so we it was in like my school, my elementary school was right there. Like I said, the West Side Shopping Center is right there, so we walk a lot. How, um, how growing up were you exposed to or consumed art? And I use art as widely as possible. You know, anything okay. that's art, music, and it don't got to be formal. Like, even just, like, people rapping on the corner or, like, somebody playing buckets or something. But yeah. whatever, you know. Well, um, definitely, because... Like I said, it was like right down the street from Southwestern High School, so marching bands was always up and down the street. They would practice on it. It's a really small street, it's really isolated, and like um, you would hear marching bands all the time. And during the time that I lived there, Southwestern actually had Drew Hill as students, and my aunt, who also lived with me, my aunt, she was really good friends with their manager because my big cousin was also like one of his uh, talent and so they would come and sing on our front steps all of the time so I, I like knew when I was a child I knew who Drew Hill was and I remember one time I went down South Carolina to visit and they like performed on Apollo for the first time and I kept saying like I know them. That's Drew Hill. They, they like they were like you don't know them. They're not from Baltimore. I was like no, Drew Hill. That's a park in Baltimore. And they was like nah, you don't know them. So like that's one like so when I think about like music and I think about Drew Hill, that's so Baltimore to me because like I saw them grow up. I saw them practicing and stuff. Like I, Scola used to come around too. I remember he joined Drew Hill a little bit later or whatever. But like that's part. So it was marching bands from Southwestern. Then it was like. um like, I remember it was these guys, these gay guys, they used to come and they used to dance and like Vogue and stuff before I knew what Vogue actually was. Mm -hmm. They all, they was like, it was like a group of them that went to Southwestern. So it's crazy how much art I saw from Southwestern High School living right down the street from Southwestern High School. Mm -hmm. And it's sad because it's gone. Mm -hmm. I think my brother went there. Yeah. So I remember it was like a lot of activity. Yeah, I don't even was. think about that. When did you start getting into music? Um, I started getting into music when um, my mother lived here and I lived with her. And she lived in Baltimore at one point in time on Emerson Avenue. And we, I went to this school called uh, Harriet Tubman. And it was second grade and there was this kid there. I can't remember his name, but we used to do beats. Like we used to be on tape all the time. So like, it was crazy. Like one time there was like this talent show and we basically did the beats on the table for the talent show, but it was apparently pretty good. So ever since then, I kind of just always been interested in music. It was definitely looking at vinyl records uh, and going to the record store, going to music stores. Um, my mom started going to church in Cadenceville when we moved to the Cooks Lane, and there was a record of tape traders out there. Um, she got remarried in the, the mid-90s and 
Uh, I remember my older brothers, um, I remember seeing like rap music for the first time. Uh, and then certain album covers, I remember walking with a panther by LL Cool J. And you know, like him on the cover with the panther. And I was just like, and how big it was, you know, I was a, I, I'm still a small person, you know, but uh, I, you know, being a child and holding that big of a piece of, of art in your hand. And uh, with my with my stepdad, he had, and still to this day, if I'm not mistaken, all these records are at their house. And he had, you know, all the Earth, Wind, and Fire stuff, and um, a lot of the soul records, R&B records from the '60s, and and just that art always stood out. The Jackson Five's Victory cover, um, you know, just how spacey that whole thing was. But that would be my, you know, my relationship with the neighborhood was 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 just you know being a kid that lived around there. Um, we had a basketball court. Uh, DJ Booby used to sell his mixtapes. They used to come practice and hoop at the court and sell his mixtapes at the court. Um, Where know, is that basketball court? Uh, it's it's the West Hills basketball court. Um, it's right there off of Cooks Lane on Stanford Road. Um, uh, there's there you can there there are there you know in the wire they have like small like flashes in between scenes and I remember them shooting stuff like all the time like right there uh, like you they they would always come to the court and sit at the kind of the top of the hill and they would shoot things there was also a baseball field right there and I'm, like right behind our house and I was like this is this is cool and, like you know this, it was it was a city park um, I remember you know when they used to come in you know, repaint the hoops and stuff like that. And we used to, I remember shoveling the, the field, you know, the, the basketball court out as a kid, like to because we all wanted to go play basketball, and the city wasn't about to come back there because of the way the streets were. It was you know side streets and stuff. So I've always felt different everywhere I've gone because I don't look like everybody else wherever I'm at. But I've never not been accepted by any neighborhood that I've lived in um, because of what I look like. If anything, that made me. Not try harder, but that made that was as a child. You know, you're, you you get told to go outside. At least I don't know how it is these days, but you know, um, I'm old enough to know that there was a time in which you didn't have a choice. You know, what I mean, like no, you just go outside, make friends, and if you went outside and you encountered a bully, you know, what I mean, you got in a fight, and hopefully, you know, y'all figured it out, or y'all be fighting all summer until school start back up. You know, what I mean, and he go back home or wherever, whatever it is that goes on. But no, I've never. Uh, I don't know. I didn't. I never. Video games, I think, always brought us all together too a lot. We never, um, it didn't matter where you went to school at, anything like that. Back in those days, it didn't matter. It didn't matter about anything. It was just like, yo, y'all got Nintendo. <laughs> I got Nintendo. Y'all always got Nintendo, and we would just play Nintendo a lot. You know, video games because it was new back then. So, or the arcade too. We used to definitely go to the mall a lot. Mm -hmm. and, um, but uh, I was younger, and I also remember it, it being the '90s, and I remember. Drugs. I remember, you know, seeing the older kids, and 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 the and at this point, I realize now that maybe these were like you know young adults who were outside kind of all day long, and they had the flashy cars, and they had the nice clothes, and they had the women, and you know um, they went out. And, you know, they 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 went to somewhere in Baltimore nightlife wise, and I guess what I think is interesting is how nowadays I don't see that anymore. Um, you know. Uh, and, and maybe that's something which I perceive as missing, but... I would say I've... It definitely was more like the experiences of living there. Like, um... Like the drug problem. And, like, being exposed to, like, all that, I guess, quote-unquote, negative aspects of Baltimore. But still, like, having a home that was kind of positive. So, it was always a balance. But I guess in the, at the end of the day, it kind of is what it is. Like, I would... Regardless, this is where I, I grew up at, and it kind of has some experiences. That's pretty much it. I would say they, they did shape my art because even though I guess I can be seen as like this somewhat eccentric artist, I still am grounded somewhat in that reality of being a 90s kid who grew up around crap. So I can tell you about some shit that's like weird like anime but I can also tell you about some shit where like that happened on Appleton Street or like whatever the case may be so it's I guess it's a different dichotomy so it kind of balances me out and doesn't make me like annoying to the people who <laughs> annoying to the people who are like all I want to hear is hood shit but still not annoying to the people that's like I want to hear something positive <laughs> so it's like it's pretty much like I feel like I consume art like all types of ways because like growing up in growing up in the hood I was exposed to a lot of hood music like I was exposed to 3-6 Mafia I was exposed to that but also being the weird kid I also was like exposed to MTV and My Chemical Romance and things like that 
So definitely like all over, I kind of just grab influences or grab things that I've liked. Be. Even now, I kind of just get inspiration from like structures or as well as music, as well as visual art. Like, I feel like everything's art. <laughs> and everything can tell you a story, so I kind of just suck it in from wherever.